Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So this is the second unboxing I have done on the TP-Link AC750 travel router. Because the first one, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to sit outside Curry's, Curry's PC World, where I bought it from, to do the unboxing so I could go and test it out on the McDonald's Wi-Fi. That video is still going to be uploaded. I haven't edited that or anything yet, but that will come out. That will come out today, probably, and then this will come out a couple of weeks after, um, once I finally get around to editing this video. But yeah, I'm going to show you more in detail what you can do with this, because I wasn't too clued up on it myself. There's not actually that many videos on YouTube showing you what you can do with this. So when I went to McDonald's to try it, basically, you can use this to, like... So, yeah, let's open it. See, here it is. Uh, normally, there'd be a little peel on the front, but obviously there's not. Um, uh, you've got all the LEDs. Something I find quite interesting is you may know that TP-Link have this new logo. It's not really new, but like they had the old logo. Um, if you look in here, it's got the old logo in the Ethernet port. Well, it's got the old TP-Link logo. Um but yeah, it's got the WAN slash LAN because you could use this as an access point or like just a router on its own from an Ethernet cable. Or you can use this as a client to connect something that has to be on a wide network to a Wi-Fi network basically. And there's different modes. See, what I needed to be on when I was doing the thing in McDonald's was I believe it was Share Hotspot. But I was on this bottom one and was going on the configuration website and setting it up as a range extender. Uh, but on the bottom it's got the micro usb yeah when i bought it i thought it would have a built-in battery no it doesn't you have to run it off a wall plug or a power bank and then it's got the usb for a 3g 4g modem or you can use it for file sharing so you see i've got an external drive here and you can just put it the right way around you can use it like that to file share stuff on the network so that's quite useful if you're traveling, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let's get into the rest. You have a little Wi-Fi card that gives you its default SSID and it gives you a space to write down your own if you change it, which you probably will because it's a lot nicer. And then in here, you have a power cable, which also there was micro USB cable, which also has the old TP-Link logo on it, which is quite interesting. And then you get this flat, fairly long and quite nice Ethernet cable, except for it keeps its shape, it doesn't actually go flat. Um, and then plug, yeah. Uh, here's what I should have looked at when i first set it up so do so yeah 
scenarios. During travel, I want to, the wired network is only limited to one device connect uh, at a time and I want to share internet with my Wi-Fi devices. So share Ethernet is what you want to go on to. And if you want to turn an existing public Wi-Fi network into a private network, uh, you want to click share hotspot, which is what I didn't do. What I did was one of the at-home ones, I tried to set it up as a range extender. Um, so we're going to mainly focus on the at-home one since we're not out. Let's plug it in. I'll set it up as an access point first. So this is my little setup for it to be an access point. So it's on that mode. And if I did share Ethernet, it would do the same thing. But it would be isolated from this network. So the device, so this router would not be able to see the devices connected to this. But with it set up as an access point, this router can. Uh, so that's the difference between them two modes, basically. So yeah, you can see it there, TP link underscore. Obviously it'd be different for yours and that. The password to get into that will be on the card so there's the five there's a normal one which is 2.4 gigahertz and then there is the 5g one which is five gigahertz and i think it should just straight up just work and yeah it does and that is pretty much my full speed if you want to change the settings this is the website you go to tplinkwifi.net and the user and password to get in is just admin, admin, which you can change, obviously. And yeah, there's a quick setup here. So it knows it's an access point, so you can say yeah. And this is the quick setup for the 2.4 gigahertz, and you can change it if you want. And you can also change like the Wi-Fi channels, the channel width, whether it's BG and N mixed or just B and G mixed, if you want to have N as well. Um, and you can do the same sort of stuff for 5 gigahertz. And next. And yep, yeah, finished. So you could change the Wi-Fi name or whatever you want when you're on there. And then there's all these other options here as well. So I'll now show you as a range extender, just to show you the setup. It's the same sort of setup if you do the um, share hotspot, except for you can change the Wi-Fi password because it just replicates the password as the one you've connected it to uh, when you set it up as a range extender. Now, the thing is with using this as a range extender is the Wi-Fi signal isn't that good, especially the 5 gigahertz. I would only really connect to this if you're in the same room as it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. But then the whole point is it's a travel router and you're going to have it with you. So you, the idea is... So the idea really is that you have it near you, so I suppose that makes sense. So we'll go to quick setup, range extender. And now the thing is this, is it's dual band, but you cannot extend a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz signal like a normal Wi-Fi extender. Um, but it's actually quite clever since there's only like one 2.4 gigahertz band and there's only one 5 gigahertz band so what wi-fi extenders tend to do is when you do that is say if it's a 2.4 gigahertz only wi-fi extender for example um it's using the same band same 2.4 gigahertz band to receive and transmit wi-fi that can cut the speed down by half so you can either connect it so there's two ways to set it up you can have this connect to Wi-Fi using 2.4 gigahertz and then connect your devices to 5 gigahertz or the other way around. Now I recommend connecting this to like, for example, like the public Wi-Fi using 2.4 and then connecting your devices to the 5 gigahertz network. You can still use this 2.4 gigahertz network, but it's not as quick. But I seem to find connecting this using 2.4 and then connecting in your devices to 5 gigahertz because you're only going to be because you're going to be near, next to it pretty much anyway um you get pretty much the full speed so i connect it here to charlie's room wi-fi 2.4 gigahertz well, it says the signal strength is 120 because it's right next to it but then as you can see oh a lot of these devices a lot of these wi-fi's don't even come up on my phone so you get a lot more options i guess so I'll go to customize and then extension and then on this one Wi-Fi 5G 
G. And then you have to enter in the Wi-Fi's password and just check over all the settings to make sure it's doing what you want and just click finish. And then it will reboot the device and you'll have to reconnect it using that new Wi-Fi. So as you can see, it's now down there, Charlie's room extension 5G. Um, now what I'm gonna do is put this in a different room to demonstrate it proper. I don't know why that's connected to the 2.4 gigahertz. So I've now plugged it into the USB in my kitchen and basically it's fairly far. I don't get that good of a signal from my router in here. Um, I'd say my room's about up here, so my the router's like over there, sort of. And then it's coming down into the kitchen. Into this, that's why I recommend connecting it to your router using 2.4 and then connecting your device to this 5G. Join, and we should see what sort of speeds we get doing this. Now obviously, it varies in how you have it set up, what, what Wi-Fi you're connecting it to. A lot of public Wi-Fi's are not very good. And yeah, that's pretty much the full Wi-Fi speed. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed a more in-depth video rather than the other video where I was just sort of <laughs> unboxing it outside curries. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys come back for another video. I should soon have a video out about this um, and maybe some more products that I'll buy. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.